with this progressive movement, do you think other bills that maybe in the past have, haven't made it out of committee or haven't made it to the floor may oh, get yeah. looked at this year, death with dignity? Uh, do you think that that may have the momentum this year uh, to, to mm -hmm. get through both chambers? I don't know. That's, that's another one that's, you know, a lot of emotion involved in that. And um, to, you know, we're a society now, palliative care, this is something that we never really talked about before. But we do help people be comfortable in their final days. And people do stop having medication and doing treatment, and that's their choice. And then through palliative care and comfort, they, they fade away, they die. But um, there's a lot of big issues, and all of a sudden they're coming at us fast and furiously without, you know, without hearing from the public, without really talking about, you know, you have to look at all the implications. You know, before I got in the legislature, I used to think, oh, there's two sides to every story. Hmm. There's about eight or ten sides to every story and every issue. And you really have to look at them all, and I do, I do too. I can't even say on that one. I don't, I don't think I would vote for that. I think it could be abused. Medicare for all, any talk of that potentially being you, I don't introduced? think you can do that as a state. I don't, um, a standalone state could not have that. Um, first of all, you have to get the permission of the federal government before you could do that. Mm -hmm. And the bill that we had that was in the legislature last year, um, it's passed the assembly the last few years. Yeah. yeah, but what it does, it takes all the Medicare and all the Medicaid money and all the private insurance money, puts it all in one pot, and that's going to pay for everybody's health care. Except it didn't cover long-term home health care and nursing homes and assisted living. And that's where most of the Medicaid, the biggest portion of Medicaid goes to. So... Um, if it ever happens, and certainly, you know, I'm not saying one way or the other, but it has to be done at the national level. Vermont looked at it, tried it, and decided right. before they even tried it, they said, wait a minute, this is way too expensive. And exactly. They had, a, they had a problem coming up with a consistent source of funding for yeah. it. Yeah. I, I think there are some issues, you know, though, on the Medicare. Um, I remember I had a woman whose husband died, and she was only 58, and she hadn't worked. And she wasn't going to have any health insurance. He died before he retired, so there was no pension. There was just a lump sum that you could buy in, maybe lower that age where you could buy in at 60 to 65 to get the Medicare or something like that. And, and we actually have this essential health plan that New York State has that's very, very good. We send a lot of people to that. It's about $20 a month. It's a, really good enough plan. It's almost like Healthy New York was the plan we had before right. that. Yep. But you go $100, $200 over the income eligibility and you're into looking for $600 a month for a health plan. So there also needs to be some way of softening that increase in income. Uh, a little leeway, a little flexibility, maybe they have to pay in a little bit. But rather than take away the health insurance because they made uh, $400 too much money this year. So um, you lose the incentive for people to work. Uh, just a quick checklist of some of the other bills and proposals by Governor Cuomo. Raising the legal age to buy cigarettes to 21, tobacco and cigarettes. I'm coming around because if, if that's what the communities really want and these counties really want, um, you know, it doesn't, I don't know what it helps because people disobey the laws, they get someone else to buy it for them. I think the bigger concern right now is vaping. Mm -hmm. That is a huge issue, and it's being happening in high schools, and people don't even know people are doing it. And they can sit in a classroom with a little tiny thumb drive, and they can put stuff in that, and they're actually getting drugs right in the classroom. And, and the legislature it. taking some steps there by uh, uh, looking at a 20% tax on on vaping products in the hope that that might have some impact? Yeah, we think if we tax, it's going to stop people. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and look at how we've taxed cigarettes, and then we still have anti-cigarette smoking and all of that, and yet now we're going to go to maybe you can't smoke cigarettes, but you could smoke marijuana. Wait a minute. <laughs> you know, we got to get our handles on these things. But uh, There's also the criminal justice reform package that would eliminate cash bail in, in most cases except for the more violent uh, <coughs> charges and, and, and cases and crimes. 
Is that a good idea, or is it often unfair to, to poor people who may live in, in rural areas? Well, it, it may be very unfair to some poor people who live in areas, but certain crimes and some bail, you know, we ought to be looking at. And talking to uh, law enforcement, they think there's ways to help this program, but you still have to have it sometimes when someone is in danger of being, you know, a flight risk. A flight risk. Yeah. And uh, it kind of went from a flight risk to everybody, and maybe we need to go back a little bit. The Which governor's I think I would look at, yeah. The governor's proposing uh, to require seatbelts on school buses. Yeah, well, only if they're shoulder straps, I've been told, because if you put a lap seat belt on, you can do more damage to a child if they have an accident, and the ability to get out of that bus is, is tough on that, so. Is there um, concern that would be an unfunded the, mandate uh, passed on to school districts? It'd be an unfunded mandate. A lot of the school buses do have the seat belts on them now. Uh, but when you talk to uh, bus operators, you know, if a child has a seatbelt on and it's not adjusted properly, maybe because the child before on that seat was a different high school size, kid yeah. <laughs> or a different size, it doesn't work. It puts a lot more onto people to make sure. But, you know, seatbelts in cars are important. Um, they will tell you that we're very fortunate that the number of accidents on school buses are very, very low that you don't want any accident. And, um, you know, if they as go forward with new buses, have the shoulder straps, would be the better ones. There was a horrible accident last fall in Schoharie, uh, the one involving the limo. The governor has proposed banning stretch limos altogether. Is the legislature looking at reforms, <coughs> but maybe not a total ban? You know, this was a horrible accident, absolutely horrible. When you think of the number of people killed that instantly, and I, I just keep visualizing the inside of that stretch limo as that went crashing through. But um, I think before you just ban them entirely, and certainly that stretch limo was not following the rules, was illegal. And as I tell people sometimes when they'll say, well, you know, I don't break the law and my facility is just right and why do we have to have these other ones is that every law is made for one bad guy who does it so I don't know that you would ban that would ha affect an entire business but some of them are terribly long and in the ones that are modified and adjusted like that there ought to be more inspections there ought to be more regulations for them for sure um, but we see where we go on that but uh, definitely have to do something in that area